Well, I'm sat, I'm saying I'm the outgoing uh, awards chair for SIG, SIGPLAN. The awards process is an important aspect of what makes programming languages a vibrant and thriving community. And by celebrating the achievements and contributions of people who have done, uh, uh, done very well in the field, we inspire others. So I think it's very important that we carry on this tradition and you think of other people to nominate and, uh, for the awards that I'm going to show you. And uh, de de deadlines, in, deadlines in January. So what are the awards? There's a Programming Languages Achievement Award, which is, given, which is given to lasting contributions to the field of programming languages. Here are some of the previous winners. Perhaps you can try and think of who should be the next person to get their name on the list. There's a Distinguished Service Award, which for services to the programming languages uh, community. We're going to announce the winner of this, of that, of the, of this award in a, few, in a few minutes. There's a Programming Languages Software Award for software systems that have had a significant impact on programming languages research, implementation, and tools. And somebody from this community has won that award as well. That will also be announced in a, uh, in a moment. There's a Robin Milner Young Research Award for extraordinary contributions by young investigators uh, in programming languages. And finally, there's a John C. Reynolds Doctoral Dissertation Award for Office of Outstanding Doctoral Dissertations. The deadline is in January 2019, but you can nominate people now. So I really encourage all of you to think of, a, think of great peop people to nominate for these SIGPLAN awards. Let's, let's do the awards. So, software award, Racket. Please. <laughs> While we come up. So, Racket has made lasting contributions to research and teaching of programming languages with unique features which have helped to drive innovations in areas like language extensibility, software contracts, uh, uh, gradual type systems, DSLs, and many other things. Matt, congratulations. Could you like to say a few words? Congratulations. Yes, I'll say a few words. I get to speak for a bunch of people. Uh, from those of us who are here, Matthias, Robbie, Sam, and myself. Uh, for those who couldn't be here, Sriram Krishnamurthy, Jay McCarthy, and uh, Ellie Barzilay. Um, this, this means a lot to us. Uh, we'd like to include some people who are here, Ryan Culpepper and John Clements. Stand on up so people can see you. Um, also, though they're not here. Um, let's see, they're not here, but Cormac Flanagan, uh, Vincent St. Amour, and Matthew Butterick for their uh, long-term and recent leadership. Um, it, so many more people, and some of them are here. Really, we would like to thank uh, Thanks to and from the whole Racket community. To because Racket is developed by a lot of people. From because I'm sure the community, um, this will mean a lot to, to all of them uh, when they find out about this. Um, thanks to ICFP for being Racket's home, uh, for being receptive to our work over the years. Uh, Racket recently joined the Software Freedom Conservancy, so that's where the prize money will go, to the Racket project at the Conservancy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so the, the next award is for Distinguished Service. The winner, Zina Ariola. Uh, Zina is the founder of a long and a long time organizer of the Oregon Programming Languages Summer School, OPLSS. The school is a large part of what has made the PL community have a shared principles, and in the past two decades, it's been a particularly good start for young scientists. So, congratulations, Zena. Yeah, well, uh, thank you. I just want to make sure that, that to say that the success of the summer school is due to many people. So some have contributed to uh, organizing it, and others have uh, devoted their time and expertise to the students. And in particular, I would like to thank Bob Arthur that uh, has contributed to the summer school since the beginning. That was back in uh, 2002. And so I feel that uh, this award should be shared with all of them. And uh, with uh, probably many of you, I see Adam who came, and uh, I see, I mean, other people. So, well, thanks. So I get the award, but many people work for it. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. There's another category of awards for each of those main SIGPLAN conferences, which uh, is awarded to the most influential paper from 10 years ago. 
2008, Adam Chapala, Parametric High Order Abstract Syntax for Mechanized Semantics. Congratulations. This paper describes how adding parametricity to high order abstract syntax yields a powerful tool for simplifying proofs of programming language meta theorems. Oh, congratulations, and perhaps you can say a few words. It's very meaningful for me to be able to receive this award at ICFP, which was the first conference that I attended back in 2002. I really associate this community with a, a rare sense of positivity and enthusiasm, which kind of makes sense because in 2002, functional programming was kind of a niche thing that went on in academia and that a few hobbyists were interested in, and it's become mainstream now. So we definitely won. Go team. <laughs> and I think the subject of this paper, mechanized proofs of program correctness is another one that's, that's about to go mainstream in the, the next few years. So I'd certainly encourage any students out there hunting around for theses to consider this subject. And uh, another fun fact about this paper is that I, I did the research and wrote the paper as a weekend side project while I was experimenting with being a software engineer in industry after I finished my PhD. So that's just an interesting data point for anyone wondering about whether non-traditional career paths can turn out in research. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay. That sounds done. Okay, so next up I'll describe uh, the student research competition process and then the, the results at the end. So the kind of standard approach is to solicit abstract submissions from undergraduate and graduate students. Um, based on those submissions, we invite uh, a subset of those students to come present posters. Um, based on the results of the poster pre presentations, we invite um, uh, the four students that you saw yesterday to, to present on this opera stage. That's not usual, but um, we did that this year. Um, the prize money for the top three in each category are provided by, by Microsoft. Um, the top uh, winners in each category move on to the next round of the ACM SRC competition. And then this year, uh, the Journal of Functional Programming and Cambridge University Press uh, sponsored some book prizes for, for the winners as well. And so before I talk about the, the, the student submissions this year, I wanted to take a moment, please thank the uh, many committee members who spent time writing reviews and evaluating uh, the student presentations uh, here at ICFP. And, uh, a round of applause, please. I wanted to thank the poster and presentation judges in particular this year. So we decided to do the poster presentations kind of in an in individual setting during the day on Monday, um, which I think gave us a little bit more space to, you know, give time and, uh, um, you know, time to, to talk with all the students. Um, but that meant that those judges, you know, missed about three hours of the conference. Um, and actually, TARC missed the presentation of his paper. And when I double checked with him that he was okay, he replied, that's okay, I've read my paper. Okay, so this year we got nine submissions, eight in the graduate category and one in the under, undergraduate category. All nine received three uh, thorough reviews and all nine were well above the bar for you know, presentation here, so we were very happy with the quality of the submissions. Unfortunately, one submission is not quite enough to you know, uh, award three, you know, top three prizes in the undergraduate category, but you know, as a committee, we decided that you know, we would not automatically award the um, one undergraduate student the prize. We wanted to make sure that the you know, quality of the, the, the research and the depth of knowledge was you know, uh, worthy. And in this case, I'm happy to say that there was no question about you know, whether that was the case. And so this year, the first prize of the undergraduate category goes to Jesse Siegel from the University of Oxford. Round of applause. So Jesse, in the little packet of medals I got this year from the ACM, there was none that said undergraduate, so I'll track that down, but in the meantime, please uh, enjoy this apple. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I was going to say you should wash that, but... <laughs> <laughs> the graduate category had um, eight submissions, and you know it was hard to narrow it down to just the three that um, presented yesterday. There were a lot of great submissions that you know we would have loved to have had more time to present. Um, but we had to, you know, choose um, three, and then again, even among that three, I think the quality was 
um, you know, very high. I think um, all these projects are really uh, w worthy of, of recognition. Uh, but we had to make decisions, and um, the way that uh, it falls is the third prize in the graduate category goes to Kuhn Powell's from KU Leuven. The second prize in the graduate category goes to Tristan Noth from the University of California, San Diego. And then this year's first prize in the graduate category is Michael Arnzenius from the University of Birmingham.